Chapter 12, Lesson 1, Model Inverse Variation. Now we've talked before about this concept of direct variation. And direct variation is when we have an equation like this, it has that term in front of the x, uh, the x value, and that's a. And that's called the constant of variation. And basically the idea is that whenever x goes up, y goes up. And this one will go directly through the origin of a coordinate plane, so it goes through 0, 0 on a coordinate plane. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So that's direct variation. Inverse variation is almost the opposite. In inverse variation, what ends up happening is when uh, the equation is written like this instead. And what happens is when x goes up, y goes down. And when y goes up, x goes down. One way of thinking about it is this, it's, this equation is also x, we could write it as x times y is equal to a. So you can see there if a is any number, then if y goes up, then x has to go down, and when x goes up, uh, when y goes up, x has to go down. So the constant of variation is going to be that a value. So what we're going to look at quickly here is to see which one of these are uh, inverse variation, direct variation, or neither. And this one here, it looks very similar to what we've got up there. So that is inverse variation. When x goes up, y goes down. Another way to think about this, this is, uh, this is going to be this, like that. And actually the a value in that particular situation is going to be one-fifth. So now here, we've got a constant, so it's neither. This does not go through the origin. For here, this one is going to be direct variation. So looking at these again, what we got here is we've got a constant here, so that means that it is neither direct nor inverse variation. Here, when y goes up, x goes up. When y goes down, x goes down. And so therefore, that is direct variation. Here, we've got when x goes up, y goes down, and vice versa. So that is going to be inverse variation. And here, this is actually going to be also direct variation. Now, the thing that's really cool about inverse variation is that you come up with these funky-looking graphs because they actually have two branches to them. We're going to see what this graph looks like in a second because if you think about it, we've not only got the values here, and I like to rewrite this out as actually like this, x, y is equal to 6, because to me that makes more sense. Um, when x is equal to 1, what's y going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to 6. When x is equal to 6, uh, what's y going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to 1. And so that's why we end up with those points there. And the other part, though, is that, that you've got to keep it in mind is that there's also going to be when, when x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 6. When x is equal to negative 1, y is, or when, uh, when x is equal to 6, negative 6 over here, is e y is equal to negative 1. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 6 here. So there's going to be these two branches, and what it's going to look like is actually this. And I know that looks kind of funky because we're used to graphs that connect, but in this case here, it can't connect. And the reason why it can't connect is because if you think about it logically, well, because if that x value is equal to 0, if it ever crosses, uh, crosses this vertical axis here, then what's going to happen is that the y value is going to be something where we can't figure out. Because we're being asked um, to divide 0, or to divide 6 into, um, or actually 0 into 6. And that you can't do. So, um, And then the other way to think about it is if, if we want to switch these around, same sort of thing here. We're being asked if we have uh, x and y is equal to 6. That's another way of writing this. There's no possible way of making either x or y equal to 0. So there's no possible way of multiplying either of them by another number and getting 6. So that's one way to think about it. And this graph, this type of graph, is called a hyperbola. And there's these two symmetrical parts that are called the branches of the hyperbola. And again, there's just two of them always. And this is when we have, uh, when we have that inverse variation. This is how it shows up. And there's also these 
two lines that actually are not a part of the hyperbola, but they're really important because what they do is they show where the graph cannot go. In this case here vertically, the graph cannot cross that line, actually horizontally I mean the graph cannot cross that line, and vertically the graph cannot cross that line. So those are actually called asymptotes, and it approaches to them but never intersects with them. So it can get really super small, like let's just say x would be equal to, oh, let's say, 600. Then what's y values? y's value is going to be equal to 0 0.01, that's one decimal place, two decimal places, so it's going to be 0 0.01. So it's going to be super close to 0, but it's never, ever, ever going to get there. Now, for this, for this inverse variation equation, again, I like to think about it as, oh, okay, well, we're going to start with uh, x times y is equal to 12. Okay, so what is it? x times y is equal to 12. Well, I've got 1, 12, that's one point. I've got 12, 1, that's another point. i got 6 and 2. i got 2 and 6. I've got 3 and 4. I've got 4 and 3. Those are all possible answers. And each time I have a set here, I have to have the negatives as well. Because a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. So it's really important to do this because otherwise you forget them and then that's that can be a problem because you should always have something that looks like this. And one thing that's kind of cool is that when you graph one point, when you figure out one value of it, you can just reverse it like I did with these. Just reverse it and end up with the exact opposite point. Uh, there's only one value that that doesn't work for, and that's uh, strangely enough when, when x is equal to the square root of 12, y is going to be equal to the square root of 12. That's kind of where it changes that direction. I'll show you that in this next graph. So you can see x is equal to 12 and x is equal to, uh, x is equal to square root of 12 and this is the negative square root of 12. That's going to be right about there and that's where it sort of shifts that direction. But if you look and graph all those points, that is how it's going to look. So you, you have to graph really, um, you have to get used to not graphing uh, straight lines in this case and that's an important skill. Um, but uh, again, just paying attention to this, making sure that this makes sense. Uh, because it does make logical sense, it just, uh, you just have to get used to graphing these two branches of the hyperbola. So another type of problem you'll encounter is it says something like this. The variables x and y vary inversely. And when y equals negative 2, uh, y equals negative 2 when x equals 4. Write an inverse variation equation that relates x to y. Okay, and then find the value of y when x is equal to negative 10. Okay, actually, again, all you have to do is figure out what the values are. And really, the simplest way of doing that is just going, okay, well, you know what, what's x? If we know it varies inversely, x times y is equal to a. So x is uh, going to be 4. y is going to be negative 2. It's going to be negative 8. So the equation is going to be exactly like this here. And then when I substitute in the value for x is equal to negative 10, what I end up with is there, and so it's going to be 4 fifths. So let's just quickly look at this problem here. The variables x and y vary inversely. So we know it's that x times y is equal to the a value. Write an inverse variation equation that relates x to y when x equals 2 and y equals 8. So it's just going to be 2 times 8 is equal to 16. So we know x times y is going to be equal to 16. When we set it up the correct way, it's going to be y is equal to 16 divided by x. So now if I plug in this x value there, it's going to be y. What's the y value going to be? What's 16 divided by negative 4? It's going to be equal to negative 4. 
And that makes perfect sense. It's negative 4 times negative 4 is equal to 16.